pertaining to the numbering of the children of Yashriel. Listen, please. Starting at verse 1, it says, And Shatan stood up against Yashriel and provoked Da'uya to number Yashriel. Do you see this? I want you to notice the enemy, Shatan. Don't see a lot of you. I wonder sometimes, have many of us forgotten that he's still here? Have we forgotten that he's moving even on the internet? Have, have my brothers and sisters, have we forgotten that? Are you able to identify the movement of Hashitan when he moves among the internet? Verse 2 And Da'uyad said to Yahweh, you are, and to the rulers of the people, Go number Yasriel from Beer Asheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Do you see this? We're talking about a great man. We're talking about a leader. We're talking about a king. The mighty king who slayed Goliath. Da'uyah. Do you see this? Listen. And Yahuwah answered. The master Yahuwah make his people a hundred times so many more as they be. He says, but my master, the king, are they not all my master's servants? Why then do my master require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Yasriel? Do you see how you are? He's questioning leadership. Now, there's a, now we, you have to be careful because there are times when people question leadership. And we all have seen this in the past. And people still do it now. When you question leadership, there are those who know what they're doing and they're doing it facetiously. They're doing it already concocting the plan. But notice in this instance, our ancestor, one of our ancestors, Yoab, he's questioning Dawyab, my master, why are you doing this? Do you see this? So we see integrity here. Listen. Thank you, my father, my king. You leaders, you got to understand, if you're not careful, the blood can be on your hands. Listen, my family. Thank you, my father, my king. It says here, verse 4, nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Yahweh. Wherefore, Yahweh departed and went throughout all Yisrael and came to Yerushalayim. So we can see our ancestors' word still went forth. He was very persistent in numbering our ancestors during this particular time. Verse 5, and Yahweh gave the sum of the number of the people unto Dawiyah, or Dawid. And all they of Yashriel were a thousand, thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Yehuda was four hundred three scorn and ten thousand men that drew sword. But Lahu Yai, or Lewi, and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Yahweh. So we can see that even Dawiyah's right hand, man, he disagreed with what the king was doing. You see this, my brothers and sisters. Verse 7, And the Almighty was displeased with this thing. Therefore, he smote Yahshua. See, this is a lesson. My leaders, you gotta, we have to be very careful. We can do something that's not inspired from Abba. And we have to understand that when we do something that has not been inspired by our great father, then guess what? Abba is going to deal with us. You need to understand this. He will, him and his son will deal with us. Let that be known and take note of that, my leaders. Thank you, my father, my king, for your inspiration. Listen, my family, please. Verse 8, And Da'u said unto the Almighty, I have sinned greatly, because I have done this thing. But now I beseech or I ask you, do away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. One of the beautiful things we can learn from our ancestor is that when he did wrong, he admitted it. He wasn't a stubborn ox. Do you see this? Do you understand? At times, he, he was very stubborn at times. What I mean is when it came to repentance, Please guide my father, my king, to speak well of your servant, my ancestor, Dawiyah. Understand that when I have the father dealt with our ancestor, when he was exposed to the knowledge that what he did was wrong, 
He acknowledged it to our Heavenly Father. And we can also take lessons from our ancestors. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? When you do something wrong, admit it and move forward. Don't be stubborn like an ox. Don't be bullheaded. Don't be stiff-necked. Thank you, my father, my king. When you do something wrong, when I do something wrong, we need to do what? Own up to it, repent of our evil ways, and guess what? Get back in line. And thank our father, our king, for their grace and mercy. But notice how Dawyer said how he acted very foolishly. And we all have come, we all have succumbed to this, haven't we? Foolishness. So we got to do our best to not do that. Do you understand? And if we do, we got to be able to repent and get back on track. Listen, verse 9. And the master Yahweh was spoken to God, Dawyer Seer, saying, Go and tell Dawyer. Saying, this says the master Yahuwah, I offer three, listen what he says, I offer you three things. Choose you one of them that I may do it unto you. How many of you would like to be in a situation like this? But see, we can learn a, a very wonderful, this is a powerful lesson from my heavenly father. Abba gave him, a, he gave him three, three options. He didn't have to do that. We can see his grace and mercy right here. Our Heavenly Father could have just moved on him and, and, and instantly dealt with him, as we've seen him done in the past regarding the scriptures. But he loved Dawiyah. Do you see this? He's telling him, choose what I should do to you. And our Heavenly Father is going to still chastise him, but he's telling him, you choose. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters, my leaders? Are you understanding? Thank you, my father, my king. Listen, my family. Verse 11. So God came to Dawiyah and said unto him, This says the master Yahuwah, Choose you either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before your foes while that sword of your, of your enemies overtake you or else three days the sword of the master Yahuwah, even the pestilence in the land, and the messenger of the master Yahweh destroying throughout all the coasts of Yahshua. Now, therefore, advise yourself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. So the prophet's telling him he needs to, he has to consider what the punishment is going to be. You see this, my family. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 13. And Dawiyah said unto God, I am in a great, listen, he says, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the master Yahuwah, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hand of man. One thing about our ancestor, he was a very wise man, wasn't he? Very wise. He knew about the grace of our Heavenly Father. He'd rather be in his hands than in the hands of his enemies. You see this? And we need, here's another lesson. That, thank you so much, Father Makin, for this, your teaching, the call to, to an assembly. We can learn another great lesson. Notice how Dawiyah, he feared our Heavenly Father. A lot of us, we have to work better on fearing him. Because if you fear him, those of you leaders out there, listen carefully, my brothers. If you fear him, you will think twice before you cut that camera on. You will make sure you humble yourself before you bring forth the message of Abba Yahuwah and his son, Master Yahushua, to the assembly. We have to fear him. We got to do better. Do you understand, my leaders? Thank you so much, my father, my king. And notice how when you continue to read the account, you'll see how many of the children of Yahshua died. Do you realize this, my leaders? And what you do, the choices that you make, can affect the assembly. Do you see this, my friend? You look at what things are happening right now, and every leader needs to consider what, you know what, what is it that I have done? What have I done? It's easy to point the finger at other people, but you got to be willing. 
You got to be strong enough to look at yourself, look at the mirror and say, what is it that I've done? Maybe it was something I taught. Maybe I didn't conduct myself this way. What have I done? And we got to be willing to do it the right way. And if, listen carefully, and when I find out he reveals it to you what you did wrong, then you need to get it back so we can move forward. Thank you, my father, my king, for your wisdom. Please turn me to the book of Psalms. Go to Psalms, the 50th chapter. Psalms 50. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's start at verse 1. It says here, the mighty almighty, even the master Yahoo, have spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, the Almighty have shot. Our Almighty shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Verse 5, listen to what he said. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall be, listen, and the heavens shall declare, thank you my father and my king for your correction. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness for the almighty is judge himself, Selah. You see our aunt, you notice how our heavenly father, he's calling as far as how he did with our ancestors to gather his saints before him. Those of you who are considered to be saints or those of you who say Korashim, those who are set apart, consider these things. Prepare your vessels. Get your, get your mind right. Do you see this? Let's get in order. How are we going to do our Heavenly Father's work? How are we going to do what he desires us to do? And we're not even right. Now, I'm not saying that the gospel is not being preached. I'm not saying that brothers and sisters are not doing wonderful work. That's not what I'm led to say. Understand and listen to reason. Listen to the counsel of our Heavenly Father. Try the Spirit to make sure that this be of the Almighty and the Son. Do you understand? Thank you, my Father, my King. Now, let's continue. Verse 7. Listen to what he says. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Yisrael, and I will testify against you. I am the Almighty, even your Almighty. I will not reprove you. Listen to what he says. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of your house, nor he goats out of your foes. For every beast of the forest is mine, and a cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls and drink the blood of goats? I have a father even from the beginning. He wasn't pleased as far as I want you humans to just kill animals. I have a father did not create the animals to be killed. The reason why you had sacrifices as a result of the fall of man and sin, the sin nature. Many animals died in the place of, of us during those times. Animals were not created for that. Do you understand? My family, when our Heavenly Father created mankind, he didn't create mankind to eat the animals in the beginning. He didn't create animals to eat mankind. Do you understand? What did I thank you so much, Abba, for your wisdom. Thank you, Abba, for your wisdom. What did I have the Father do in the beginning? He created structure. He created a kingdom for mankind to rule the animals. Do you see this, my family? But over time, because of what we have done, we're guilty. We're the ones that's guilty. The sons and daughters of Adam. When we sinned against Abba and we, we listen, it's when I say we, collectively speaking, as far as mankind listened to Hashetan during that time. And, and when, when we ate that forbidden fruit, when we ate from the tree of knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil, we should not have done that. Because of that is a result of what we have today. 
But our master Yahushua came. Our father sent him to die for our sins. You understand? Thank you so much, my father, my king. So he's telling, he's telling them, everything is mine. Excuse me. Thank you. Father, thank you. Everything is his. Thank you, my father, my king. It all belongs to him. And he's given all things to his son. Do you see this, my family? Thank you, my father, my king, for the correction. It's not mine. It's his and his sons. Let's get that straight. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? Thank you, my father, my king, for your correction. Listen to this, my family. Verse 14. Offer unto the Almighty thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the Most High. Iniquity and in sin. Excuse me. Thank you, Father, my king, for the correction. That was another verse. It said, verse 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Let's read that again. Go back to verse 14. Thank you, Father, my king. Offer unto the Almighty thanksgiving. And pay your vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Thank you, my father, my king. Well, make sure I'm reading the right verse. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? Listen. Verse 16. Now, listen to what he says. Now, he's talking to his children. Now, let's see how he's dealing with those who are sinned, who, who sinned against him. He says here. Look at verse... Verse 16, but unto, but unto the wicked, the Almighty says, what have you to do? Listen to what he says. What have you to do to declare my statutes or that you should take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. That's powerful. So if we are his, if we are our father's enemy, what are we even doing speaking forth? His characteristics, speaking forth his laws. Who are we to speak forth his word if we're not going to listen? Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? Call a call to the assembly. Do you see this? Let's go to Matthew the seventh chapter. Thank you, my father, my king. Matthew the seventh chapter. <clears throat> Let's look at what our master Yahushua says. Matthew chapter 7. Let's start at verse 1. And he says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet or set, it shall be measured to you again. And why behold, or why look you the mote that is in your brother's eye? But consider not the beam that is in your own eye. Or how will you say to your brother, let me pull out the moat out of your eye? And behold, a beam is in your own eye. You hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then shall you see clearly to cast out the moat out of your brother's eye. You see how our master is teaching us how to do what? He's telling us don't judge unrighteously, because if we judge, the same thing is going to be held against us. He's teaching us how to before you can help somebody else, make sure that you're right. You see this. A lot of us want to hold a mirror up to other people, but we don't want to turn that mirror around and look at ourselves. And Master Yahushua was telling us, don't be a hypocrite. You can't tell someone to do something and you yourself are not doing it. Many of you already know this. Correct, my family. Let's go to Matthew, the 18th chapter. So we got to judge righteous judgment. See this. Matthew, the 18th chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's start at verse 15. A lot of people, we all heard this before. But let's really look at it. This is when you have an issue with a brother. Listen to what it says. Moreover, if you, listen to what it says. Moreover, if you're, excuse me, thank you, my father, King, for the correction. He says, moreover, if your brother shall trespass against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he shall hear you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, then take with you one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Okay? Listen now, because a lot of us have done this, but we got to listen. Verse 17. And if 
he neglect to hear them tell it unto the assembly. It says church, meaning the assembly. But if he neglect to hear the assembly, let him be unto you as in he the man and the public. See, a lot of us haven't really, we haven't paid attention, my family, what our master was saying as far as this is concerned. If you have an issue with somebody, go to them alone. Handle it privately. If the opposition, as far as the person in opposition does not hear, what do you do? Go get two or more. Not to gang up on no one, but like our master said. So that way every word may be established. You understand? If he doesn't, if the opposition, if he or they or she, whomever it is, if they don't hear you and the one or two more, what do you do? Tell it to the assembly. And now it says if they don't hear the assembly. So that means the assembly is obligated to speak for the problem. You see this, my brothers and sisters. And if they don't hear the assembly, what did our master Yahushua say to do? What did he say? Look at, the, look at, let's read 17 again. It says, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the assembly. But if he neglect to hear the assembly, let him be unto you as a heathen man and a publican. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? One thing I want to let you see. Uh, just scroll, because our master gives the parable about the unforgiving servant. For those of you in the body of Messiah who's struggling with forgiveness, look, I just want you to see something quickly. Look at verse 35, and this is what our master says. He says, so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother's trust their trespasses. And you can study the, the, the parable of the unmerciful debtor. It, that's what it's heading in my Bible. It says the parable of the unmerciful debtor. So if you're struggling, if somebody's offended you and they coming to you, now they being, you know, fake with it. You pray about it. I find that he'll guide you in what to do specifically. But if they're coming genuinely to you and they're like, brother or sister, I'm sorry. And you still... You don't want to let it go? I have the Father's got a judgment for you. Do you see this? Our king got a judgment for you. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? Thank you, my father, my king. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Let's listen to the, the words of the apostles, one of our apostles. Apostle Shaul. 1 Corinthians. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you all are familiar with this. Let's let's look at it again, and let's commence at First uh, Corinthians chapter one. Let's start at verse ten. It says, "Now I beseech you, brothers, by the name of our Master Yahushua the Messiah, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind." And the same judgment. So we all got work to do. We got work to do, body of the Messiah. Listen to what he says. For it had been declared unto me of you, for it had been declared unto me of you, my brother, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you say, I am of Shaul, and I am of Apollo, and I am of Kapha, and I am of the Messiah. Listen to, listen to what Shaul has, has to say to the symbol. He says, is the Messiah divided? Was Shaul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Shaul? That's powerful. You see how people were saying, well, I follow him. And then somebody said, well, I follow this person. It's not supposed to be that way. You see how Shaul is calling out on the carpet? So, brothers and sisters, we got to learn to do better. Thank you, my father, my king. Thank you so much, my father, my king, for your precious word. I want to say this to you, my family, that we have to be willing, those calling on the name of our heavenly father, Master Yahuwah, and his son, Master Yahuwah, through the precious spirit, we have work to do. Do you see this? I challenge all of you. We need to reach out to one another. We need to deal with the problems. 
Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? If you send an email, if you don't get a response, you pray about it. You send another email. You send another email. You hear me? Thank you, my father, my king. If there's an issue, do what our king said. Do you see it? Do you see this, my family? Pick up the phone. Give them a call. Leave a respectful message. Don't be condescending. If it's false doctrine or false issues, before you label somebody a heretic, get on your hands and knees first and pray to our Father our King how to handle the situation. Our Father our King will give you the instructions of what to do. Do you see this? Reach out to your brother. Do you understand? You understand, my brothers and sisters? I say this in love because I love each and every one of you. Do you understand? My heart aches for the body. Do you understand? When I see the comments, it does not make me happy. When I see how we as brothers and sisters talk about each other, it does not please me. And you know it does not please our Father and our King. So I want to take the time. I want to thank. Thank you, my Father and my King. I thank you for this teaching. I want to thank all my brothers and sisters out there, all you leaders out there. Do you hear me? I want to thank Mr. Roosevelt Bennett, Jr. I thank you, brother, for your work. You understand? You put in a lot of work over the years. I want to tell you, thank you. Keep standing strong. And whatever issues or mistakes you've made, brother, you got to, you, you know what to do. You talk to our Father King about it. If there's any mistakes you've done. I want to thank all the brothers out there. Those of you from uh, Warriors of the Ruach. Do you see this? Brother, brother Kenny, brother uh, Javon, and, and his wife, his, uh, Kel, uh, Sister Kelly. Do you see this? Brother uh, J uh, Kenny, I believe I said your name already. Those in Followers of the Way, Brother Mike, Brother Diego. Do you see this? There's so many of you. My brother, my close brother, servant of y'all. You know who you are, my brother. I love you. Brother Robert, Brother Law, do you understand? We got to get on one accord in the name of our Father and our King and get this, get this stuff out of our way and move forward. I love you, my brothers and sisters, and I will be contacting you as I'm led. Maranatha, amen.